So we come to comets. An electric discharge model of comets was not even on the table at the beginning of the space age, allowing astronomers to embrace Whipple's dirty snowball model as the scientific consensus. But images of comet nuclei show a scarred and cratered rocky surface. And usually you go by the appearances if you haven't had a chance to actually scoop some of it up and, and examine it in the laboratory. Meanwhile, gravity measurements suggest a comet is a fluff ball, very low density. <coughs> so what I'm suggesting is there is something seriously wrong with consensus understanding. And I showed this slide on the opening night. Um, it's my opinion that of all the bodies in the heavens, perhaps none will prove more definitive in confirming the electric field of the sun than the comet, because the cometary display relies on there being a weak electric field centered on the sun. It is clear that at least by the second half of the 19th century, many scientists believed that comet tails were fundamentally electrical. They looked and they could see the commonality with electric discharge experiments in low pressure gas, and they made the connection. For example, in August 1882, English mechanic and world of science wrote of comet tails, there seems to be a rapidly growing feeling amongst physicists that both the self-light of comets and the phenomena of their tails belongs to the order of electrical phenomena. And there are other uh, papers from that era that I could easily add to that. When Comet Halley was flown past, uh, it was a, a surprise because the nucleus was found to be blacker than a lump of coal. It, the, some of these small rocks have comas larger than the sun and the ma material that was coming off the comet, instead of just sort of evaporating, it was coming out in jets, which was unexpected. And some of these jets also were on the dark side. Now, if it's supposed to be uh, formed by the heat of the sun, you do not expect to see jets on the dark side. It had a complex cratered surface. Once again, if you're just ablating material in the heat of the sun, you would expect it to look more like a melted ice cream than a cratered surface. They exhibit layering. And we've also, having sampled uh, the tail of a comet, found high temperature minerals, just like meteorites. It was discovered by accident that they emit X-rays, and X-rays are a signature of an electrical discharge. Pure and simple. Comets explode for unknown reasons. Well, in the electric model, it's simple. If you're discharging the body, and that body is an electret and has an internal electric field, the process of discharging that comet will build up stresses within the comet, rather like an overstressed capacitor, which will eventually explode. And that's what we see. This is the astronomer's jet model, and it's the most fanciful thing you could imagine. Here we have jets coming out of orifices in a, vertically from the surface. If you imagine a rough surface and ice trying to escape from underneath, you don't expect it to come out like that. It can come out at any angle. It can come out in a fan. You do not get highly collimated jets. And uh, of course, with Comet Hartley too, it was said that jets drag water ice out of the nucleus, producing a comet snowstorm. And this is one of the things that's puzzled astronomers, is how you get such a tremendous volume of very fine dust. It's, in fact, when uh, Halley was first flown past, they couldn't believe the fineness of the dust. There is an answer to that. When heat from the sun reaches a pocket of dry ice, this is the explanation, the traditional one, poof, it instantly transforms from solid to vapor, forming a jet wherever local topography happens to collimate the outrushing gas. Now, the local topography will not collimate the outrushing gas unless it's a perfectly, perfectly cylindrical vent. Apparently, these CO carbon monoxide jets are carrying chunks of snowy water ice along for the ride, and this is the story. It's um, more or less a fairy story. Now, Comet Vilt 2 shows similar surface etching to that of an electrical discharge machined EDM surface, which you see below. In fact, Cometville 2 had a thing called a footprint on it, which you can see down to the lower right of the uh, comet nucleus. And at the top of the EDM image, you can see a small footprint, if you like, 
in the uh, surface which has been etched by an electric arc. So the similarities are obvious. It was said in the report uh, from the uh, scientists, it is not clear why sublimation processes driven by solar illumination on a spinning body would form globally distributed circular structures. Of course it's not. However, electric discharge do form globally distributed circular structures. Unresolved bright spots seem to be connected with the jets from the nucleus. And this is the same kind of thing as happened on Jupiter's moon Io. There were spots, bright spots, which burnt out the cameras and which were coloured in by NASA as um, lava, because that's what they believed it was. So these unresolved bright spots are probably the arc touchdown points. 